Warm welcome to you all to Midday Prayer on this Tuesday after Trinity 4. We begin with the Angelus. The angel of the Lord brought tidings to Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, Lord, your grace into our hearts, and as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion, we be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Alleluia. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature hath creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word. Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. We're going to do, use the Psalms of Ascent today and the appointed psalmody for today, Psalm 125 and 126. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but stands fast forever. As the hills stand about Jerusalem, so the Lord stands round about his people from this time forth for evermore. A sceptre of wickedness shall not hold sway over the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous turn their hands to evil. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are true of heart. To those who turn aside to crooked ways, the Lord shall take away with the evildoers, but let there be peace upon Israel. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we were like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue with, sh on our tongue with songs of joy. They said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has indeed done great things for us. Therefore we rejoiced. Restore again our fortunes, O Lord, as the river bleds of the desert. Those who sow in tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed, will come back with shouts of joy, bearing their sheaves with them. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And we'll continue our practice of reading the Gospel of the Day. A reading from the Gospel according to St Matthew. A demoniac who was mute was brought to Jesus, and when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been mute spoke, and the crowds were amazed, and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of the demons, he casts out the demons. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Our second reading comes from Celebrating the Seasons, a book we're well used to now. And I'm actually going to use 
the reading from last Sunday for Trinity 4, which comes from a homily of Gregory the Great. My friends, I would like to advise you to leave all earthly goods, but I do not want to sound presumptuous. So if you cannot abandon everything that the world offers, then at least hold the things of this world in such a way that you are not held by them. <coughs> earthly goods must be possessed. Do not let them possess you. The things that you must own must be under the control of your mind. Otherwise, your mind is dominated by the love of earthly things, and you will become possessed by your own possessions. Let temporal possessions be what we use, eternal things what we desire. Let temporal goods be for use on the way, eternal goods be desired for when we arrive at our journey's end. As regards the business of this world, we should view it obliquely and with detachment. Let the eyes of our mind gaze straight ahead of us, and our attention be focused on the destination for which we are bound. Our faults must be torn up by the roots, eradicated not simply from our behaviour, but also from the meditation of our hearts. The pleasures of the flesh, the anxieties of life, the fever of ambition, must not be allowed to hold us back from the great supper of the Lord. We must even practice a holy indifference with regard to those honourable things we do in the world, so that the earthly things which may delight us may always serve our body and not distract our hearts. My brothers and sisters, I do not presume to tell you to give up everything. Instead, I am suggesting that even while retaining your possessions, you can, if you wish, let go of them. And so, by handling temporal matters, you, you will continue to strive with the whole of your mind after eternal aims. With such an attitude, people are able to use this world as if they had no use for it, bringing to the service of their lives only that which is necessary, while never allowing materialism to dominate them. All worldly concerns should be under control, serving a person externally, as it were, and never deflecting the concentration of the mind as it aspires to higher things. Those who act in this way have earthly things for their use, but not as objects of their desire. They use whatever they need, but the sin of avarice is not in them. So let there be nothing to hold you back on the desire of your mind, and do not let the delights of this world ensnare you. Let's have a, a brief moment of reflection um, on those readings. First of all, our gospel reading, the demoniac liberated by Jesus. And that liberation, that healing, did not produce universal approval. Just like when you try to liberate things, people speak about, out about injustice, it doesn't gain universal approval now. If we look at this particular passage, we see Jesus upsetting the Pharisees um, because he wasn't following their ways. And we see him going out and making a proclamation of the good news of the kingdom and seeing and bearing compassion. Now, compassion is an important quality that we possess as people of faith because compassion means to suffer alongside, it means understanding some of the difficulties that others are in and feeling for them and Jesus is very clear in that gospel passage that of course we are commanded to go out and to be laborers in the harvest so Christianity is not just a sort of feel-good religion to make us feel good about ourselves you actually have to get off of our backsides literally or metaphorically and actually go out and make a difference in our world we are called to be that praying presence in our world bring transformation and change to the society in which we live how we do that of course is very different for each and every one of us because we have different skills and different gifts we discern our vocation to serve the church in different ways but nevertheless christianity is not a passive thing but rather an active thing grounded and rooted in prayer but nevertheless with prayer leading to action and then we see um a reading from the homily of Gregory the Great about the dangers of materialism, about not being possessed um, by the things that we have. And Gregory is very measured there because he recognises that we have to live in the world and that we need a certain amount of things 
in order to be healthy, functional human beings. But that we shouldn't solely become focused on those things. We shouldn't solely be focused on material things as if they are the only good thing that we can have. And it's very important for us to hold on and to remember that, that we are not called to be captivated by our possessions. And that's about not being held back in the life of faith. Do not let the delights of the world ensnare you. Don't get fooled. Keep your eye on the bigger picture, which is, of course, God and the growth of God's kingdom. Let's pray as we reflect on those readings that God will bless us this day, that we might give him the glory. To God be the glory now and forevermore. Amen. So as we reflect on the words of God and the writings of Gregory, let us let the word of Christ dwell in our hearts with all its richness. Alleluia. That we may teach and instruct one another in all wisdom. Alleluia. Teach us to observe your laws. Alleluia. And we will keep it with our whole hearts. Alleluia. And so as we offer our prayers this day, we pray for all who are impacted by the pandemic in our world. We pray for areas of dense population and poor health care. We pray for all those who have lost their jobs, for all who face economic uncertainty. We pray for those who are too terrified to leave their homes. We pray for, for those of us who are, our lives are returning to a, a greater degree of normality than we knew. We pray for Margam Deanery Chapter meeting virtually this afternoon. We pray for Father Ben Andrews, who was licensed as team vicar in the rectorial benefits of Aberavon yesterday with responsibility for St Theodore's Port Talbot. We join together in those words our Saviour gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. God of power and love, look kindly on the tasks we have begun this day, and renew your grace within us. Make good our defects, and bring our work to that fulfilment which is in accordance with your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord and Master of the Vineyard, who allotteth our tasks and determine the just rewards of our labours, help us to bear the burden of the day and accept your will in all things without complaint. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> o gracious and holy Father, Give us wisdom to perceive you, diligence to seek you, patience to wait for you, eyes to behold you, a heart to meditate upon you, and a life to proclaim you, through the power of the Spirit of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. That formally marks the uh, end of midday prayer. Can I take this opportunity to wish you well on this day? Um, midday prayer continues <coughs> at 12 noon tomorrow. The Abbey is open today for private prayer between 11 and 3. And will also be open on Thursday between 11 and 3. St David's Margam will be open between half past 11 and half past 12 on Friday. And the Abbey will be open on Saturday between 11 and 3. And Mass will be broadcast from St David's uh, on Sunday. So I wish you well this day. May God bless you now and always.